What's up everyone, this is Hemorrhoid, aka Deep Fryer, bringing you another Super String video. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing fantastic. Uh, I'm doing alright here. Uh, we're going to continue our Abyss series. This is going to be Abyss Stage 37. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I have this footage pre-recorded, so I'm going to be uh, capturing it via Streamlabs uh, OBS software, and I'm just going to comment on the video as we watch it together, and I, I can pause it if I need to say something to you guys. But, um, I did, I did record the footage live the other night, but apparently, when you keep recording long videos on a cell phone over and over, eventually the cell phone runs out of space, and no one told me this. I thought cell phones just had unlimited space, you could just record on them forever. Um, I'll let you decide if I'm kidding or not. But anyway, needless to say, the video did not, uh, it did not record, it was unsuccessful because the phone <laughs> ran out of space, but I have solved that issue, and so let's jump in and talk about, um, Abyss Stage 37, and I think in just a second I'm gonna pull up the additional threats here. It looks like for every ten turns, agents will be inflicted with slow for five turns, and for every 10 turns, all debuffs on enemies will be cleansed. So that means you can't use a debuff heavy team like a bomb team or damage over time or anything like that. Basically, you don't want to rely too heavily uh, on debuffs for this stage. So let's see if we can try to get into the action. Okay, so here's where I'm choosing my team. Let me skip ahead just a little bit more. So, since your units are slowed every 10 turns and the enemy cleanses debuffs every 10 turns, your objective for selecting your team is basically like a couple of the other stages that we've done recently. You just want to do plenty of DPS quickly before your team is slowed entirely to where they cannot take turns proportional to the enemy's turns in order to win the battle. Now I have chosen Cornelia because she is a cleanser. So as these debuffs, the, the slowing debuffs that are innate to the Abyss stage, as those stack up on our units, Cornelia does have a cleanse that will also pretty much fully heal your team, uh, especially if they have more than one debuff and if you have her EX weapon, uh, you know, she's going to do some crazy, crazy healing and she's going to be a, a valuable asset in a stage like this where debuffs stack up on your team rather quickly. Uh, so let's skip ahead and see who else I'm picking here. Now, I picked Kawuka, so... Just for general DPS, and let's skip ahead. Who else did I pick? Okay, I picked Sando. Now, Sando might be an interesting choice. I don't remember exactly what my reasoning was the other night. Because Sando's ultimate does more damage based on um, the number of debuffs that the enemy has. So since these enemies are going to be cleansing their debuffs, you may not be able to take full advantage of, uh, of Sando's ultimate. So, this is a good chance to showcase the fact that Sando can be useful without debuffs. Sorry, I'm trying to get, trying to get this, um, trying to get this menu off of the bottom of the screen here, but I can't seem to get it to go away. But anyway, so let's see what we're going to do here. Now my thinking here is probably of course to get rid of healers, which I, as I've told you guys before, I don't like healers on the enemy team. The DPS that I do, I like that DPS to count for something. I don't like it to be reversed. Now Agite, I believe I brought Ring Agite, and yes I did, you can tell by, um, if you look at his ultimate, it had a little swirling uh, arrow on his, on a yellow circle on his skill 4, and that means it 
is basically a passive skill. So, Agite's uh, glasses does not have a passive skill on skill 4. So I, I brought the ring Agite here, and as you saw a moment ago, I stunned the tank class unit on the far left, because I didn't want that tank class unit to taunt me. So, right here I was probably considering using Sando's ultimate on that tank just because he has a debuff, but the opportunity to do some unit type advantage or to, to try to continue to kill the healer was too tempting for me, so I'm sure I'm going for those healers with Sando. I really wish I had the original footage, I'm sure you know, my commentary probably made a lot better sense in the moment, but, you know, I'm just doing the best I can and working with what I've got, because I don't want to skip stage 37, it wouldn't be right because we're trying to do, you know, the whole series, at least through, you know, hopefully maybe 40 or 41, I don't know if I'd be able to complete 42, I, I've not completed 42, I, that's where I stopped last season, so uh, it looks like I'm just continuing to try to do some DPS with Agite, decreasing the turn meter on the tank, so once again, he cannot taunt me, because I'm wanting to take my, my line of thinking here, I, I'm not terribly threatened by that tank unit. I want, now it looks like I'm using Cornelia's cleanse here to get rid of all those debuffs, and now look, my team is back at full health, and Cornelia increased everyone's turn meter because of her EX weapon. So I'm in excellent shape again. Now here, I believe I'm about to showcase why Sando can still be really good even without utilizing her ultimate. I'm, I'm about to do what, what I like to call the Sando dance. Sando just killed a unit, gave herself an additional turn, kills this unit, and gives herself an additional turn. Uh, if you max Sando's passive and you have her EX, she has an 80% chance to grant herself an additional turn after defeating an enemy. So this can be incredibly useful in situations where you have several uh, enemy uh, monsters or enemy mobs that are somewhat low on health. Sando can bounce from one to the other, picking off, you know, hopefully at least two or three of them before you run into some bad luck with her RNG and you miss that 80% proc. So, and now another good thing about that, that maybe you hadn't thought of, because Sando is taking a turn consecutively, over and over, her cooldowns on her skills are also coming down while she's taking these additional turns. So you can sometimes, you can easily, if you're in somewhat of a long fight, uh, you can easily you know, hit Sando's second skill twice, maybe even her ultimate twice, in the same fight. It's, it's possible, especially in situations like Raid, um, or Campaign, it's very useful in Campaign, because Sando is, is, can, can kill multiple units in, in a single turn by giving herself, you know, additional turns. So she's very useful, um, but anyway, I'm just doing my best to kind of throw in some commentary here, um, I'm disappointed I, I, I lost that original video, but hey, I'm still here bringing you guys the content, so I hope you're enjoying it, hope you're having some fun. Uh, I know I always have fun talking to you guys. I think Kawuka is about to end the fight here, so there we go. There's Abyss Stage 37. Still quite easy if you have a decent team that can do some fast DPS before those uh, decreased speed debuffs stack up on you too, uh, too much, or once again, taking a cleanser like Cornelia is an excellent, excellent move as well. Now at the end of the video here, I believe I open those loot crates for you, the, um, the gear boxes. I don't think I got anything too terribly good here, let's take a look. I do believe I got a natural six star. Yes, I got a natural six star. So you get like really excited when you see that. And then you click on it and you find out. Come on, click on it. Come on, hemorrhoid, click on it. <laughs> there you go, crit resist, a natural six star crit resist. So if you ever have a unit you wanna make kind of speedy, 
and you don't want people to crit that unit, you know, there you go, a natural six star crit resist. And the others are not even worth talking about, you know, just average, average gear. But anyway, um, I'm going to kind of end it there. Uh, once again, I am sorry that I don't have the original commentary for Abyss 37, but honestly, I didn't even build that team perfectly either. I believe there are some better units I could have picked, but I brought the pain to the enemy via some strong units with strong DPS, and we got it done. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. This is Hemroid. Out. Dokman says you are as dangerous as some Mina at a barbecue. He's psychotic. Some people say the same thing about you. What people? Well, I mean, let's face it. You're not exactly normal, are you? It's not exactly a normal world, is it? Why did you bring me here? 